Now, Anaxagoras has a very, very, or makes a very, very strong impression on Plato. Plato had studied all of what he called, or what Aristotle called, the naturalists, or the people who were involved in phusis, or the studying nature, how, where the cosmos came from. But what impressed Plato about Anaxagoras is his idea that the mind is the cause, the force behind the cosmos. But Anaxagoras, like like Democritus, like the other contemporaries, the other post-Parmenideans, people that came after Parmenides, they could not refute Parmenides' claims and took it seriously. So he, like the atomists, like Democritus and other atomists, came to believe that coming to be, because you can't come to be, right, because that's changing, and you can't perish, you can't go out of existence, because nothing can ever change, but rather the matter can't change, but coming to be is just combining things in a different way, and perishing, going out of existence, is just taking them apart in that way. And he also had a view that everything is contained in everything else, almost like the view of Anaximander. But he said everything started out, you know, in everything else. And what happened was things got separated as a result of a circular motion. If you think about it, if you if you spin things around in a centrifuge, things separate out. So that's Anaxagoras' idea. And what gets everything going? Somehow mind. The mind sets everything in order and causes everything. It causes the beginning of motion, which ultimately Plato's a little bit disappointed when he hears because he thought mind was going to explain the purpose of everything. Of course, one of the questions when you're thinking about cosmology is, why are we here? Do we have some purpose? And the purpose ends up being that mind got some circular motion going. Not a very satisfying answer, very disappointing for Plato.